What's up everyone, my name is Jordan and today I'm going to show you how to build this parallax art effect for the web using Spline. Let's go! This project is available to clone in the Spline community if you are lazy. I have broken it into three goals and six steps, so you can go ahead and pause and read those here. Let's jump into step one. Step one is to choose some artwork. So there are lots of great places to go to get public domain artwork. Here are some links where you can just Google public domain artwork. Uh, it should be about 1200 pixels minimum width. We are going to optimize this for the web, so it doesn't have to be huge. Um, it should have some depth to it. That's really important. And that's about it. So we're going to download any artwork of your choice and go to step two. Step two is in Photoshop and we're going to isolate the layers. This part sucks balls, but what it is is basically duplicating the base layer. Always keep one untouched. And then it's a process of masking or deleting content out. We want to isolate somewhere between five and 10 layers of content, depending on how far away that content is from the perspective. So this is done with a combination of the object selection tool, quick selection tool, magnetic lasso tools, your best friend, uh, polygonal lasso tool, lasso tool, and the magic wand tool. It all depends on the content itself. An important note here, there is no feathering whatsoever. These are all going to be hard lines. Okay, so I have my first layer all selected. This is the stuff closest to the camera. I'm going to invert and delete. Then on the next layer back, invert and delete again. Then we repeat this process for the next layers. Now I have my second layer all selected. I duplicate and delete the invert. And then on this other one that I've already deleted the first bit, I invert and delete again. This method of cumulative destruction saved me a lot of time, not so much in this painting, but in others when I got to the back layer because it was intersected by all sorts of different layers, not just the one in front of it. The tool you're using is really gonna depend on the content itself. So here I'm doing ropes. So the polygonal lasso tool allowed me to get really straight, clean lines really quickly. But over here I'm doing sea wash. So I was doing the magic wand tool to get a nice scattered effect. So taking a look at our results, here are each of our individual isolated layers. Okay, that part sucked, but now it's time for step three, which is to generate to complete these layers. First, I'm gonna expand my canvas because the camera's gonna move side to side a little bit. So we need some room around the edges so we can keep the composition as close to the original work as possible. So let's generate to complete the back layer, which doesn't have any transparency whatsoever. We're gonna use the magic wand tool with contiguous off and tolerance set to zero to select all of the negative pixels. And then we're gonna use generative fill with no prompt whatsoever to fill that space. We're gonna get three options and I'm gonna go with this one and kind of cut out all the stuff at the bottom that I don't need. Okay, so here's our second layer. I found that it's best to actually break this into two separate parts. First, fill the holes and then expand the artwork itself. So now I have all the holes selected. I'm gonna generate that part and then I'm gonna move on to expanding the artwork. So I'm gonna use the magic wand tool to select all of the negative space, and then I'm gonna remove from that space areas that I don't want included in the generation. So I'm approximating exactly where this cliff side is going off to, and this line that I'm drawing right now is actually going to inform the generative process itself. After a few attempts, here's where I ended up with this layer. We're gonna repeat this process for all of the layers, drawing out the regions that we need filled in, and then using generative fill with no prompt whatsoever, to fill that space. Sometimes it takes a couple attempts or piecing things together, but sometimes you get amazing results right out of the gate like this. And now we can see that we have all the layers of the painting fully generated. Before we move on to the next step, I like to put the original piece of artwork on top and kind of toggle it on and off, looking out for major artifacts that I might have created or major pieces of destruction and going in and making some of those repairs. We're ready to move on to step four, which is exporting. Starting with this lightning bolt, we're cropping in on this because we really wanna be optimizing throughout this process. I actually used PNG eights for this because it had a really good combination of low file size and high quality images. We have no anti-aliasing here, so I found that this matte color was super important in getting smooth lines and blending the content with its background. So here's the second layer, and in exporting this one, I'm gonna start the colors at a high level like 256 and then work my way down until I start to see the artwork really degrade. I want to get away with as few colors as possible and this one I think I can go all the way down to 16 without seeing a major jump in the artwork itself. 
So export all the layers, optimize as much as possible, find a balance between quality and file size here. We're also going to export the main artwork itself as our guide layer. We're ready for step five finally, which is in spline. We're going to drag our image stack in, put it into perspective mode, add a camera, and then lock that camera. Switching to a personal camera here, so I'm gonna grab the front layer, pull it forward a little bit, grab the next one back, pull it forward a little bit, etc., etc. spacing these out a little bit with the guide layer somewhere in between. And they should be relative to what they are, so the horizon's gonna be a lot further away than some of this other stuff. And we're gonna switch back to our main camera and start moving and positioning all of these layers so that they match up with that guide layer. So I'm gonna individually turn everything but one layer on visibly so that I'm only looking at it and the guide. I'm gonna take it down in transparency and then scale it and position it so that it matches up perfectly. Toggling it on and off will really help you really hone this down and get it nailed. Then I turn that layer off in visibility and move on to the next one, looking only at each layer and the guide individually. The great part about this is once you get these in place, as long as your cropping doesn't change, you can iterate on them. So for example, this rope behind these guys' legs, you can see I forgot to paint it out. So I can go in, make that change, re-export it, and then replace it in spline, and I won't have to do all that positioning over again. Once we have all of our layers matched up with the guide, we're gonna create a group and call this scene. And then to this scene, we're gonna add a event, which is gonna be a look at event, where it's gonna look at the mouse. Okay, taking a look at our parallax scene, it is looking pretty good. Sometimes you just want more control in terms of transparency and feathering. Like for instance, in the original piece, you can see that this lightning bolt is kind of showing through this rain, even though it's behind it. So I can do that directly in spline using a depth mask. So I'm gonna use radial, I'm gonna invert it, get it in place, set it to mask, and that way I can add a little bit of transparency where I want it. We are ready for step six, so let's take a look at our export settings. We wanna set mouse events to global, that way the movement will work even if it's not inside the embed itself. Over here, we wanna turn all of this stuff off, but we do wanna leave touch one finger on with some orbit limits so it can work on mobile as well. We're gonna be using the spline viewer, and we're gonna start by copying just the production URL itself. So moving over to Webflow, I have a CMS collection here called Paintings. I already have all of my basic information for this painting populated, but I'm gonna go ahead and paste in this embed URL and publish it. Over on the design side, here's my collection list, and within it, each collection item has an embed element. I like to use the ratio settings to really control the sizing of this. That way it can stay at 100% and be super responsive, but I can still stay in control of that aspect ratio and the composition at large. For the embed code itself, I'm gonna go back to spline for a second. I'm gonna copy the entire embed script and bring it over and paste it in. But then I'm gonna replace the URL with that custom embed URL field that we created earlier. That way this project stays super extendable and when I'm ready to add a new painting, it's as simple as adding a new collection item. And here is our final result. We have four paintings now, each with their own parallax effect in a nice slider on this landing page. If you're not already there, you can find the entire project and all of the paintings at this URL. If you'd like to contribute to this project, give me a shout out on the Spline community and I'd be happy to include it. Good luck and thanks for watching.